Hi guys and welcome to TechTeamGB and this month's build guide. I'd like to do regular build guides so I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what sort of budgets, what sort of specs and what sort of kind of targets should I be going for in terms of the different build guides. Let me know down below. Now in this guide we're looking at the around about £1,000 price point. Now I've made a few interesting choices that you may or may not agree with and feel free to let me know in the comments down below if you don't but uh, the, the main uh, kind of topic of this build is the Ryzen 2600. We're going for a gaming build here so we're also using AGTX 1060 the Strix model from ASUS and otherwise we have 16 gigs of in the specific case that I have here 3000 megahertz uh, C15 RAM but uh, for a couple of quid less I think it's about 20 pounds you can get uh, 2400 megahertz but C14 which obviously helps a little bit on the timing side um, in terms of the cooler we're actually just using the stock cooler that comes with the 2600 mostly because of pricing but again if you do want to splash out a little bit more and get something like even even just a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo for the sort of 20, 30 pound mark, that can allow you to overclock a good amount, whereas with the stock cooler, we probably won't be able to that much. Uh, and otherwise, um, we've got a relatively budget, but still good quality Cougar 450 watt power supply, the very nice Fantex uh, Eclipse um, P350X, which is the new tempered glass, but still relatively budget case. And uh, in terms of the motherboard, we've got this uh, Gigabyte X370 Gaming 5, which because of price drops and stuff actually makes it a really good value for money when it comes to motherboards. It should come pre-updated with a BIOS and if not you can get your either uh, the vendor that sold it to you or even uh, you know you can get an upgrade kit from AMD to sort that out with uh, relatively little issues um, and just because of the, the price it makes it a very interesting um, board. And then in terms of storage we've actually gone with a single ADATA 480 gigabytes SX8200 SSD. This is obviously completely up to to you and of course because it's a PC it's heavily customizable you can do whatever you want with it but in this case I think a 480 gig SSD will be a decent starting point for gaming anyway and keeps us in our budget. So now that you've heard all the parts let's take a look at building the thing. First thing I would do is take your motherboard out and lay it on a anti-static surface the top of your motherboard box is perfectly fine for this and uh, throw in your CPU. Now CPU installation is relatively easy just align the gold triangle on the CPU with the triangle on the the socket and the motherboard, uh, lift the arm up, drop it in, or when I say drop it, don't actually drop it please, um, just gently place it in uh, and then you don't need to apply any pressure, you just push the arm back down and that's it installed. I would probably install the cooler next since this one doesn't have any connections to the case at all, it's entirely on the motherboard and it's actually fairly low profile, so with this board it actually comes pre-applied with a backplate but also with a couple of screws and uh, plastic mounting clips for a a different type of cooler that this one doesn't use so we're gonna to need to unscrew those four screws remove these two plastic clips and then place the cooler on in whichever orientation you fancy I'm gonna put the AMD logo on the left hand side and then route the cable around and connect it to the four pin CPU fan header uh, but otherwise then just screw it down in ideally a crisscross pattern so that you get even pressure applied across the CPU and then that's pretty much it next up I would install the RAM this is incredibly simple but the first thing you should do is check on the motherboard or in the motherboard's manual which slots you should use first. These are dual channel kits which means you generally have them a slot apart and in this case they uh, recommend you use the furthest slot from the CPU and the I uh, suppose second, uh, third furthest slot from the CPU if you like um, and all you do is flick open the tabs at the top, align the notch that is in the RAM and then apply pressure evenly on both sides until you hear it click in and do the same for the second stick. And next up before we start talking about the case let's install the M.2 drive because this mounts to the board like the CPU and the RAM it's nice and easy to do before we put it in the case so let's go through that. Now different boards have diff different configurations for M.2 slots some of them have coolers you'll have to remove first and some of them won't have the standoff and screw pre-attached or pre-installed on the board so make sure you check inside your motherboard's box for those if it doesn't have them pre-installed. Now mine does so all we're going to do is remove the top hold down screw, place the drive in it normally goes in a slight angle with the notch down at the bottom although check your M.2 slot just to make sure uh, place it in and then flatten it down against the standoff and install the screw and that's pretty much it okay so now pretty much everything else is at least on the motherboard and ready to be installed so the next thing we're going to do is get the case ready so in this case we're taking the uh, tempered glass side panel off and the rear side panel off arranging any wires that are pre-installed like your front panel headers and things like that out of the way and, and easy 
easy to install the motherboard, but first of all, we're actually gonna install the power supply. In this case, it's pretty easy. All you do is slide it in from the back and then screw the four screws in and that's pretty much it. Because this case has a dust filter on the bottom for the power supply, we're gonna go fan down for this one, um, which again, depending on your configuration, you may want to, to change that, but in this, that's the easiest way to do it. Now, because this case has a lot of room, we're actually just gonna install the motherboard first as opposed to pre-routing any wires, including the eight pin up the top. But uh, depending on the case you get, you may want to pre route especially things like your 8 pin CPU header uh, so that uh, when you put the motherboard in it's not trapped and, and you physically can't get at it and then have to take the motherboard back out but this one should be fine. The first thing you need to do is install your rear IO bracket or rear IO shield. This is pretty easy. Make sure that it's the right orientation as I've done that wrong a few times and then otherwise align it with the hole in the back and press it in. It can be a little bit fiddly so don't worry if it falls out or anything just keep at it and make sure that it is fully locked in all the way around and then move on to the motherboard. Now before we install the motherboard, we need to make sure that the standoffs are all in place. With my case, it came pre-applied, so I don't need to worry about it, but some cases don't have them all pre-applied or pre-installed, so check with the case manual or your motherboard manual to make sure you're installing all of the screws in the right, or the standoffs in the right places. And uh, the ATX board configuration, it's three on each row, and there's three rows, so a total of nine, um, but it's very easy to do, so just check the, those manuals. So now we can install the motherboard. All you need to do is allow Align the rear IO uh, with the rear IO shield and then place it in. This case has a really nice feature which is the two central uh, middle and upper central standoffs are actually slightly extruded so that you can hang the motherboard off those and hold it in place while you then install the screws so you don't need to have a screwdriver ready and try and put it in one handed which is very nice to see. Otherwise just make sure you're not scraping the motherboard on any standoffs and you don't have any extra standoffs in there that can short out anything on the back of the board. Um, I know that some cases can have uh, pre-applied standoffs in the wrong position, so make sure you remove those before you put your board in. Otherwise, go through adding all of those nine screws in and then start routing your power supply wires. The eight pin goes to the top left of the case as you're looking at it from your motherboard side. The CPU or the 24 pin power connector, that normally goes on the right hand side, kind of upper middle. And then you have obviously your graphics card connections, which depending on your case will route through different places, but you just generally need one or two eight pin or six pin power connectors. Uh, in this card's case, I think we only need one uh, eight pin, which is nice. So we'll just be rooting that through. Once you've connected up your main power supply wires, you can then go through and connect up your front panel header. So things like your USB three ports, they only go in one way. There's a small notch on them. So just make sure you don't break any pins in the sockets. And otherwise there is also some front panel headers for your power and reset buttons and things like that, which uh, a lot of these motherboards come with a little easy connector thing that are very clearly labeled so you can use that if you want or refer to your motherboard's manual or even just the the labeling on the motherboard for which pin goes where and finally we're going to install the graphics card make sure that you remove the rear io covers at the back uh, which just held in by a single screw each and make sure that they are the right ones aligned with the graphics card uh, x16 slot which in this case will be starting from one below the top slots and obviously we'll need to remove two of those once those are removed you then make sure that the small tab at the back of the PCIe slot is pushed down or depressed if you like and then hold your graphics card relatively safely and place it into the slot basically just slides it in you put in the two screws at the back plug in your power connector and uh, yeah that's pretty much you've, you've built a PC, congratulations. So now that the PC's built, let's take a look at how well this system performs. Starting off with 3D Mark Firestrike, we can see at 1080p we have just shy of 12,000 points, 1440p is just over 6,000, and 4K is just over 3,000. Feel free to check out 3D Mark's website for a comparison. Now in terms of gaming results, start rally on ultra settings, we're looking at 86, 70, and 41 FPS respectively, which are all really nice to see. In GTA 5, a bit higher, we're looking at 137, 98, and 50 FPS respectively as well which actually especially that 1080p number is great for your 144Hz gaming or even 1440p at 60Hz you're going to be very happy with. Now in Unit in Heaven we're looking at 104, 62 and 26 which again are all really respectable results and shows that the machine can really handle most of the games that you throw at it. So as you saw the system is great for 1080p and even 1440p gaming. If you wanted a higher end especially say 1440p with high refresh rates you might want to throw in a little 
little bit more money and grab something like a 1070 or a 1080 but with this build of course you can always turn down the settings and games a little bit so you can get a bit of extra performance and of course if you want a thousand fps in csgo or whatever you can obviously turn those down and this will run that just fine now, of course, there are a few things that I might recommend you change about the build depending on your budget, especially the storage configuration. Well, this is fine for a couple of games installed and, you know, a couple of movies or whatever, and obviously Windows installed as well. Um, it's not a massive pool of storage. You can't install every game in your Steam library, as I know some people like to do. Uh, so just, just bear that one in mind, of course. Uh, you can also go with a standard SATA drive if you don't need the NVMe performance, and you can save a little bit of money there and then possibly possibly go for, uh, again, something like a two terabyte hard drive to go with it, but this is a nice simple option, which is obviously quite nice. And of course, if you want to overclock the processor, which isn't something we covered in this video, then first of all, uh, you will need a bigger, better CPU cooler. Again, this one uh, was chosen mostly for its pricing, but uh, this motherboard is more than happy and more than capable to overclock, especially something like the 2600, and they will overclock to say 4.1, 4.2 gigahertz. So I think if you if you did splash out for an extra CPU cooler, uh, you would actually be pretty happy with the performance you can get from it. So there you have it, the June 2018 build guide. I'd love to hear, as I said at the start, your suggestions for future build guides, budgets, you know, kind of uh, topics I should be covering, parts or anything like that. Let me know in those comments down below. I'd also love to hear from you if you have any suggestions for things you would change about this build guide or really uh, any, any of your own thoughts. Let me know in those comments down below as well. Also, if you have any questions, uh, again, even if you're just building a system like this one or you, you want suggestions for your own budget let me know in those comments down below and I'll try and get back to you when I can. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis you can of course check out the Patreon link where you can support me directly or the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links which massively help me out and I genuinely thank anyone who uses those so thank you to you guys. I'd also like to thank Overclockers UK for the power supply and the case and I'll likely be doing a case giveaway uh, for this specific model relatively shortly, so make sure you follow me on Twitter for updates on that. Otherwise, you can check out that subscribe button with the bell notification thing, which apparently doesn't even work most of the time, so thanks YouTube, um, uh, and also the other videos over here for you, and uh, yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching, we'll see you all in the next video.